Hello, my name is Jan Benham, founder and CEO of the Aroma Shop and Institute of Aromatherapy. Today's topic is the use of chemicals in cosmetics. And we're specifically going to look at chemicals that can do harm and how to avoid them. So as a formulator of cosmetics, I do have a private label company, I get asked by various companies to make products for them. And then they put their own name on the, the products. So I do get sent a lot of different uh, products to me to basically for, see if they, I can make something similar. So the first thing I do when I look at a product is I will pick it up, take a look and smell it. I can usually tell right away if it has perfume in and there's a definite difference between perfume and the use of essential oils. So if it has any perfume in, I won't touch it with a barge pole. I will try to make a copy that has no perfume in using essential oils. Now what these perfumes do, they contain heavy metals. They also contain ingredient, um, chemicals that disrupt, disrupt the endocrine system in the body, especially a woman's body. So they can cause a lot of problems down the road if they're used regularly. So this perfume is not just in cosmetics, in 99% of cosmetics, it's also present in air fresheners, in fabric softeners, scented candles, and so on. So we are surrounded by this perfume all the time. So I would suggest, first of all, get rid of those items. You don't need them. You don't need to use fabric softeners. You don't need scented candles. You can just use plain candles, nice beeswax ones, for example. And of course, get rid of those air fresheners as well. So that's just an example there. So my interest in uh, making pure 100% natural products came at a very early age. At the age of 13, I decided I was very much interested in health and I also wanted to know where everything came from. I had an innate secure, curiosity about that. And I read that uh, sugar was bad for me. So I decided uh, in, in the UK, everyone is reared on tea and sugar, milky tea and sugar. And so I decided to stop having sugar in my tea. Oh boy, those puppy pals release were released. What is kind of funny is even many years later, 40, 50 years later, my mother would still put sugar in my tea. Anyway, that's a by the by. So my interest in health came at a very early age and I, studied, I went to study holistic medicine and also became an aromatherapist. And at that time we were taught that nothing penetrated the skin or very few products penetrated the skin. They couldn't, it was impossible. We have an epidermis that is waterproof layer. And it, so it, there wasn't much regulation around the use uh, of applying chemicals and what have you. I mean, I remember mothers putting talc over all the baby's bottoms and breathing it in and so on. So there was no regulation as such. But I knew from uh, studying aromatherapy that essential oils were absorbed through the skin and it had been proven. There was a pioneer of aromatherapy called Marguerite, um, Madame Murie who had an aromatherapy practice in London in the mid, in the 1960s. And she was a biochemist and she studied basically how um, she noticed that when she applied essential oils, blended in oil, so it wasn't concentrated, onto the skin, that it came through, especially juniper berry, came through the body and was basically peed out. So you could smell the juniper berry in the, in, in the urine. And so she basically started the whole movement of the English style of aromatherapy, and that is the application of essential oils mixed into an oil and applied to the skin 
externally. So it's not using essentials internally like the French method. So I would call her our great grandmother of aromatherapy, the English style. So I've got here, and I will put this on the um, on on the video as well, so you can copy it or you can at least have a slower look at it. So these are some of the toxic chemicals found in personal care products. For example, in foundation, you often get a lot of heavy metals, mascara. Lipstick, uh, they have found it, traces of lead in most lipsticks. You've got parabens used in skincare products such as body lotions and moisturizers, they're preservatives. And um, sunscreens, and then you've got sodium lauryl sulfate that is still used in shampoos. And of course the fragrances and deodorants. And deodorants are one of the worst actually because we're putting it directly on to under our arms where all the lymphatic glands are. So we're gonna break these down into and look at what each of them do. And, um, and what, just to give you an example, and then I'm just gonna explain a little bit about labeling. So you can at least start to read some of the labels and see what is in the ingredient that you've just bought or about to buy and decide there and then whether or not you want to include it. We're not going to be able to keep all chemicals out of our life, but at least if we can moderate it, use cosmetics that are clean, and obviously skincare products as well, then you're going to, uh, you're going to do a lot of good things for your health. And I've written a lot about these things in both of these books, The Creamy Craft of Cosmetic Making and The Baby Boomer's Beauty Bible, about making your own products. So the first one I'm going to look at is butylated hydroxy anisole. Now excuse my pronunciations, they're long names. So they're also known for short as BHA. And so this is fragrancing. And uh, they're used as uh, preservatives in personal care products and also they, um, they're used in foods as well. So this is another thing to keep away from processed foods. And these chemicals are linked to several health concerns including endocrine disruption and organ system toxicity found in lip products, hair products, makeup, sunscreen, antiperspirant, deodorants, fragrance, and creams. So that's one that you want to look at keeping away from as one of the ingredients listed. So anything with BHA in. It says BHA, yeah. Then we've got ethanolamine compounds. And these are, um, I've got this written as uh, mentioned that it's in blush here. And they're in many different consumer products, ranging from cosmetics to personal care products to household cleaning as well products. And both have been linked to liver tumors. And it's known also as DEA. And um, the European Commission actually prohibits using it in cosmetics. Um, they're found in soaps, shampoos, hair conditioners and dyes, lotions, shaving creams, paraben waxes, household cleaning products and pharmaceutical ointments. Also eyeliners, mascaras, eyeshadows and blushes. So that's another ingredient that you would like to, you should look at. Um, we did already look at this but fragrances. Um, so many products list a fragrance on the label, but often they don't name the specific ingredients. If it says fragrancing, just stay away from it. If it says perfume, stay away from it. Unless it says you, uh, scented, scented with essential oils, 100% natural essential oils, stay away from it. So they don't list all the full list of chemicals involved. Um, um, but we do know that they're linked to serious health problems such as cancer, reproductive and development toxicity, 
allergies and sensitivities. And I personally know of a few people who have chemical sensitivities. I mean, this poor woman had to even wear a mask everywhere she went to because she would have a reaction. She developed such sensitivity, she's much better now, to perfume. It was unbelievable. So it can really create havoc in your life when you, your system gets overwhelmed that way. Now then we have, excuse me while I just scroll down here. It's not, it's not going down. Okay. Okay. Then we have heavy metals. So many cosmetic products contain heavy metals such as lead, cadmium, chromium, arsenic, mercury, cobalt, and nickel as ingredients or impurities. So they're not listed, of course, because they're just impurities. So what happens, some people uh, do is, I mean, a lot of makeup is made with oxides. Now, there is oxides that are produced for use in clays, like making uh, pottery. And then there's oxides that have been specially uh, regulated and sought through to remove these chemical, remove these metals. And um, so it's very important if, you, if you're going to make your own uh, cosmetics, like making lipstick, for example, that you do um, make sure that your, the oxides you are buying have are being made for that are safe for almost in, for internal use. So all the oxides I carry are specifically, they say food grade, for example. I wouldn't put it in my food, but it's food grade. Now, heavy metals, um, the way I've, we've all got heavy metals in our bodies. It's uh, inherent, I mean, we get it from the, the rain now, we get it from the, everywhere. So heavy metals get, come throughout your body and they of course cause a lot of problems with the body. And even um, it could be linked to depression, for example, if you've got heavy metals in the brain and so much more. So one way to remove it, and I was reading about it recently, and I just thought I, I just started trying it myself, but there is a, a heavy metal detox smoothie that you can make. And it's actually from a book called by the medical medium. And I thought it is worth a try. So it basically is using dull seaweed spirulina, um, barley grass powder, um, chilanto, which is also known as uh, uh, coriander, um, so chilanto, chilanto uh, which is coriander, and also uh, the juice of one orange and a cup or two of wild blueberries. I think I've got everything in there, plus a couple of bananas. And you whip it up into a smoothie. It's quite delicious. So I do one teaspoon of spirulina, one teaspoon of barley grass, three teaspoons of dull seaweed, and a cup of wild blueberries, a handful of the chilanto, and of course the two bananas, and the juice of one orange. And I've been having that one once a day. Just in, I'm just intrigued on how I feel, and I do feel good with it. So it's worth a try if you feel that you do have heavy metals in your system, or even if you don't, I think that's the safest way to draw out and they all work together in harmony with each other. So each one kind of helps to move along the digestive tract, pulling in. Uh, seaweed has a beautiful ability of um, absorbing radiation, absorbing, but it doesn't release it in the body, but absorbing the radiation, absorbing the metals as it goes through the body and then letting it go out through your poop. So that's just a little by the by. Okay, now we're going to look at ni ni nitrosamines, 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 I think you pronounce it. And um, this is mentioned in mascara in my information here. And they, they basically, um, they're characterized as toxic in in more animal species than other, other, any other category of chemical carcinogen. So it's a carcinogenic. Uh, whilst, while common in cosmetics, they are not listed on product labels because they are impurities. But avoiding products with DEA and TEA is the best bet. 
to go to avoiding this because it usually goes in with those ingredients. So as long as you avoid products that contain DEA and TEA is a good start to make sure that you don't have this chemical in your, in your cosmetics and creams and you don't contaminate your own body. Okay, now oxytonate is in usually sunscreens and is a UV filter, uh, but it's absorbed rapidly through the skin. It's been detected in human urine, blood and breast milk, which indicates that humans are systemically exposed to this compound. It's an endocrine disruptor that mimics estrogen and can disrupt thyroid function. So it's found in hair color products, shampoos, sunscreen, lipstick, nail varnish, and skin creams. Very important to avoid. Um, I would be, um, yeah, because it also dissolves in fat and oil, that's why it gets absorbed easily into the skin. It doesn't dissolve in water. Now, I'm against the sunscreens that are on the market partly because we do need the UV, we do need the sun. But there's a, a smart way of doing it. First of all, going out in, in not in the, the sun in the midday, in the hot sun, and lying there exposing everything, your face and everything for long periods of time. Even 10 minutes, 10 minutes is enough. You don't need to go brown, but it's nice to get a little glow. Going out walking in the sunlight, but not covering yourself up with sunscreens. There has been some, now I probably will get um, some bad reviews because of this, but I've written quite extensively about this in my Baby Boomers book. And there is a, a lot now of osteoporosis, and I strongly think that it's due to everyone having sunscreen slapped on their skin since they were babies. They've not got enough vitamin D in their body. Yes, you can take a supplement, but it's far better get the vitamin D from the sun. And it's, you know, use it like therapy. You don't go out, as I said, and go on a two week vacation and just lie there for all day long in the sunlight. That's when you get the sun damage. That's when you get problems with skin cancer. I mean, I personally don't like to put my face in the sun. I just don't like the feel of the sun on my face. I wear a big hat and um, I always like to read anyway, so I'm usually on my front, so my back gets a little browner. That's okay, but I don't lie there for hours and hours and hours. I lie there for like half an hour, and then I usually get bored and want to do something. So be sensible about it. Don't, and especially don't put your sunscreens on babies. Just use them, get them the old fashioned way, wearing hats, wearing nice clothing, long flowing dresses or whatever if you're a woman. And, um, Get some vitamin D in you. And also vitamin D, also if you have enough vitamin D, it protects you against the sun as well, against damage. It also protects against cancer. So that is my view on that. Okay, parabens, they had a lot of, uh, when I started out, parabens were in everything. These are, this is a preservative that's used in was used in most creams. Nowadays, um, everyone's got a little bit more savvy about it and there's a lot of products now that are free from parabens because there's such so many choices out there of natural preservatives that don't cause problems. But there was in, you know, back 10, 20 years ago, they were in everything. And parabens basically, they're again, they're endocrine disrupting chemicals that can be absorbed through the skin, blood and digestive system and they were found in shampoos, conditioners, lotions, facials and facial products and cleansers and scrubs. So just make sure again you can read if there's any parabens in your label. Another big one that um, I talked about for many years is the use of sodium lauryl sulfate, anything that says sulfate. Um, and that was basically found in 90% of all commercial shampoos. It's again, you can now find sulfate free now in some shampoos, especially if you go to a health food store or buy from Whole Foods, they will use different var uh, variations. So it's easier to find sulfate free shampoos, but most commercial still have the sulfate. 
Um, sulf sodium lauryl sulfate was invented in World War I, I think it was, or World War II, I'm not sure which one now, as a garage for, as a cleaner, a cleaning material. So, it, and the reason how it works is it denatures protein. So, it helps to break down protein. Now, I certainly don't want to have anything on my body that is going to break down my protein, break down my collagen, which is a protein in the skin. So, you don't, you don't want that happening. And it doesn't just happen overnight, it's a constant, uh, it's a constant use that will eventually break down um, your skin. Um, now it's also systemic as well, and it's systemic, it can penetrate and be retained in the eye, brain, heart and liver, and possibly um, cause cataracts in adults, and also can keep children's eyes from developing properly. And baby shampoo is the worst for this, by the way. It's one of the harshest shampoos you can get. It was actually developed for ba uh, baby's cradle cap, just so you know. So another product to be concerned with is talc. Um, I make mineral makeup and some, uh, a lot of mineral makeup still contain talc and a lot of um, Foundations contain talc as their base. Uh, they make a white powder and then they put the pigment in. So they make a pigment that's similar to the skin type and then they put it basically into a liquid. And that's how you make a liquid foundation. So one of the cheapest white um, powders that they use, which is a base, is talc. Um, but there has been uh, concerns that it may contain asbestos and um, and it's now suggested do not use it on babies anymore. Should be avoided in pelvic areas. It was found in baby powder, body and shower products, lotions, feminine hygiene products, eyeshadow, foundation, lipsticks, deodorants, and face masks. So make sure that you um, don't put anything on your body that contains talc. And there's so many different choices now without using that. I mean, I use rice powder, for example, as my base in my foundation. It's a specially prepared one for cosmetic use. And also an oat silk powder because oats are really nice and anti-inflammatory. Triclosan, triclosan, sorry, triclosan is an antibacterial compound and it's been linked to numerous human health problems. So trichosan is found in deodorants again, and um, its uh, exposure has come through by it's absorbed through the skin or through the lining of the mouth. And these exposures have also resulted in contact dermatitis or skin irritation and can increase allergic reactions, especially in children. So another reason to avoid regular deodorant. So there are many more chemicals that you should avoid. So what you should be looking at is when you get a look here, I've got a particular product here. Um, sometimes if a product is natural, what they will do, they'll put the chemical name, because everything is a chemical. Um, and then beside it, they'll put out where it's from. So for example, um, in this one, you've got, um, uh, laurel glucoside which is the replacement actually for a uh, sodium laurel sulfate and it's from um, it's a gentle cleanser and it's coconut based so it actually says here because it's a natural ingredient it do actually does say coconut based in brackets so we know and it doesn't say the word sulfite so I know that that's safe then they have um, other types of ingredients I think I've got in here, for example, I write here, um, say, say ceteral alcohol, coconut be beside it, and so on and so forth. Lacteria, this is preserved with lactobacteria ferment, which is a preservative, it's a natural, 100% natural um, preservative. And then the essential oils of, so we know that there's no fragrance, there's no perfume, and it will say fragrance if it's got perfume in. It will say fragrance, it won't say the chemical names. What you do have to be aware of when you um, look at natural products is some of the laws now, especially in Europe, 
is if you have, say, if you put lavender in your product, lavender essential oil, which is wonderful for your skin, um, you also have to put in, as a chemical name, you have to take put linalol in. And it's not that linalol has been added extra, it's because it's a chemical that is naturally occurring in lavender. So some of the people high up decided that linalol was irritating the skin. Actually, it is not irritating the skin, but the powers that be have decided that it is. So that's why, um, you know, if you take the individual, it's not that if I've added lavender to here and I put linalol aside as alongside it as well as another ingredient, it's because it's part of the lavender anyway. It's not being added extra. And this you'll see a lot of now coming up more and more where they want you to, uh, the laws require you to put in various chemical names. So it depends on your country of where you are of what you have to write down. Um, so learn. You can Google so much nowadays. Um, if you're not sure about an ingredient, you're there with your little box there and you're, going, you're looking and going, hmm, um, I don't know what that means. Where's it from? Now, if you know the manufacturer, you can even ask them, do you know where your cetereal alcohol is from? It's not an alcohol, by the way. Uh, is it uh, from, or stearic acid? Is it from, stearic acid is a fatty acid that can come from animal sources and also from plant sources. Is the stearic acid that they have vegan, vegan, or is it from an animal source? So things like that. And if you're unsure, then just don't buy it. Now, another thing you can do, of course, is make your own. Then you can be absolutely certain. You can source all your ingredients. And there are simple recipes. And even on YouTube, I have a bunch of videos out showing how to make basic white lotions and basic creams. And then once you've made your basic cream, so for example, this is a carrot cream that I made. You can make up a... It's got carrot oil in this is a beautiful color and then from there you can just take your blend and say okay i want to add something to this oh i think i'm going to add some essential oils i'm going to add some herbal extracts and you can add them to the finished product afterwards and that way you can be certain that whatever you're putting on your skin is perfume free and free of all these chemicals in this book, I also have um, information on how to make your own shampoo and also how to make your own deodorant, which works really, really well. So your aluminum-free deodorant. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me uh, or write them below and I will answer them. And uh, I do hope you found this useful. So wherever you may be, have a great day. And it's bye for now.